honored to be here. We are here to recognize this month as Prevention Month. And I think that we can do better with a good morning. Let's try it again. Good morning. Good morning. All right, that sounds a lot better. I just first want to say thank you to the library for hosting this event today. Um, I grew up not far away from here, attended a private school in Upper Arlington. And when I left to attend that school, I thought that was the brightest child in the world because I was always a straight A student and found out very quickly that there are other bright students in the world. So I spent many days and many nights here um, trying to understand the curriculum of the Wellington School. Um, where I was the first graduate uh, from. And so um, there's a little private stack upstairs that I used to find myself in, and um, I call that my room, and I reserved it on a daily basis in order to get my homework done. Um, with that, I also want to say a special thank you um, to Chip Spinning, who's here from Franklin County Children's Services, um, to Kristen and to your group, um, to your entire team. I just want to say phenomenal job. You are certainly um, doing a wonderful job in all the efforts um, that you are leading, and I thank you for your work. Um, to Senator Bacon, I know that he had to step out earlier. Um, just a phenomenal person who certainly helps us champion the cause. And also, I cannot wait to hear from Joe Kirk. We Joy Sing. Doesn't it just make you feel happy to hear that? We Joy Sing. Um, some of you don't know this, but I am the proud parent of an almost three-year-old child. And last night I had the experience of pausing. I've shared this story already. He's a boy, and so you spend a lot of time pausing when you have boys. And I woke up in the middle of the night and I gave him a hug and I thought, ooh, you smell really good. And I realized that I was really sticky and gooey. And then I realized that he decided that perhaps he needed a little extra Vaseline. And so he had gotten into the cupboard, gotten some Vaseline, and he smeared all over himself in the bed. So I had to pause last night. Um, and, and so, um, I, and I see some of your parents, and so you know exactly what I mean in terms of taking that pause. Um, but I know that uh, this morning we spent our day, we spend every morning singing in the car. He has his own CDs, and so I know that he personally would be thrilled if he was able to be here. I thought better not to torture you by bringing him. So he is in childcare this morning. As Christian mentioned, JFS is very committed to child abuse and neglect prevention. We house the Children's Trust Fund, and we also supervise the state's Child Protective Services programs. One child welfare strategy we're implementing right now, I believe will make a huge difference in child abuse prevention, and that is differential response. How many of you have ever heard the term differential response? How many of you non-GFS people have ever heard of differential response? Differential response gives caseworkers, who are the experts, I mean, they really are the feet on the ground, the opportunity to work directly with our families and to use their expert judgment to determine which strategy to use. We have two tools in our toolkit. The first is a traditional approach, and the second is the actual alternative approach. In the traditional response, which certainly is needed, we do a traditional investigation, and we're not certainly trying to discourage those from happening. There are many families in which we receive allegations, and it's certainly appropriate and necessary for them to actually have a full scope investigation. But using those experts on the ground means that we also recognize that there are people who have skills who can actually look at a family and determine whether or not there's perhaps a different route that we can take that could be more effective. And we call that alternative response. With alternative response, our feet on the ground, we talk to our families, and we determine whether or not there is an identifiable need that we can meet in the local community. And in doing so, we help those families meet those needs, and I'm happy to report that in doing so, it's also shown that there's no reduction in safety. So rather than doing a full investigation every time we receive a phone call, we come into the home, we talk to their families, we identify their needs, and we link them with local social services. Now what does this do for us? It means that families now know that I have friends and partners right here in my community. It means the next time I have a crisis, I can actually go next door and I know what number to call. I know that there are people who are in the community who are gonna help me, and who I can perhaps lean on when I'm having a very difficult time. A few years ago, legislators au authorized the statewide expansion of differential response in all Ohio counties. The rollout is nearly complete. Prior to that, we JFS participated in an 18-month pilot project. Over the last five years, we followed some of those families in that pilot, and we found some interesting things about them. The first thing we found is that the families who have been served by differential response had more than a 12% reduction in the rate of new reports compared to the control group. Alternative response is especially effective for families with no prior history with Child Protective Services. First-time families had a much lower rate of return. And lastly, the caseworkers, those who are experts on the ground, those who are out there daily, day in, day out, are unsung heroes, really like the, response of alternative, the alternative response approach. They believe that it leads to more cooperations from the family. They also say that it allows them to work with the families and to educate them to prevent future incidents from occurring. 
I'm very pleased to share with you that differential response will be available in all 88 counties by the end of this summer. And I'm excited about that because I know that's gonna make a difference. Now on behalf of Governor Kasich and Lieutenant Governor Mary Taylor, I'd like to read with you or share parts of the resolution, which I have for you today. Whereas childhood is a formative time and abuse and neglect can have devastating long-term effects on young lives. And whereas parents, families, members, educators, public officials, and faith-based organizations share in the effort to protect our youth in helping to ensure that children are safe and can grow without fear of abuse. Whereas Ohioans share the commitment to support our youth and to promote safe and stable families. Whereas research has shown that when protective factors are present, including parental resiliency, social connection, knowledge of parenting and child development, concrete support and social emotional development, the instance of child abuse and neglect is reduced. And whereas Ohio is committed to building a state in which all children can thrive, develop character, and learn to be responsible citizens in an environment of security and love, Whereas by lessening the instance of child abuse and neglect, Ohioans have an opportunity to make a positive difference in the life of a child and build a brighter future for our state. Now, therefore, on behalf of Governor John Kasich and Lieutenant Governor Mary Taylor, Ohio Child Abuse and Neglect Prevention Month has been officially declared the month of April. You got, oh, and we have some special honorees. Oh, yeah. <laughs>